Welcome to the short English version of my keynote at the Enquete Commission on Artificial Intelligence in the German Bundestag entitled Humanoid Robots as Tools and Partners in Higher Education. And I will not just use promising images, but I will show operational scenarios because my motto is don't just talk but do. Let me begin with a question how can humanoid robots be used in higher education? In my view, there are two central options. One is the use of robots as a tool. In the Roboprax project, we do exactly that. We use humanoid robots to teach secondary school students about artificial intelligence in everyday life by teaching them how to handle and program robots in the so-called and now award-winning Roboticum. You can find more details on our website roboprax.de. The second option uses humanoid robots as partners in teaching. But how can a robot be a partner in teaching or in education in general? Let us first take a look at classical teaching as it has been done for centuries. The scenario looks like this. Knowledge delivery at one time, in one place, at one pace by one person. Then a self-guided or group organized deepening phase, traditionally also referred to as homework. Can robots be useful in such scenarios? For example, in phase two, for support, probably not. Because that would mean, ideally, one robot per student or at least one per study group, which at the moment, for example, for financial reasons, is not a feasible option. Well, and in the lecture hall, can robots replace human teachers there? Let's take a look. Here you see three humanoid robots. A geminoid, such as Professor Ishiguro's machine clone, and also the android Sophia. Currently, both lack the necessary acceptance by humans, often referred to as the uncanny valley effect. Simple humanoid robots, by contrast, create, as we found out in our project Heart, an acceptable emotional bond between humans and robots, making them suitable for partnership relations. However, all three variants of humanoid robots are not able to focus, nor to filter. For example, they can't identify noises or faces within a mass of people, as we humans do. And as far as their emotions are concerned, they often seem to be more monotonous than motivating. Thus, humanoid robots are not suitable as teacher substitutes, so that the use of humanoid robots is currently not an issue in classical teaching. But what about digital teaching formats in which knowledge acquisition is self-guided and based on multimedia learning units and the deepening phase is supervised by an academic learning guide in class. And where students document their knowledge before the in-class phase by means of a mastery test. Inverted classroom mastery model is the label for this digital teaching and learning format, which makes the classical lecture, and thus also the lecture hall, obsolete. Especially in areas where fundamental knowledge has to be delivered. And in such a format, which you can see in this simplified version to my right, there are two central applications for humanoid robots as partners. One refers to the in-class phase, in which robots may provide learning support by taking over basic tasks, giving the academic guides new freedom for individual advice and consultation. The second application uses the data collected 
in digital teaching formats for individual counseling purposes. This option is called learning analytics. Although learning analytics can also be performed using software solutions, for example by using chatbots, humanoid robots, and this is also a result of the HARD project, humanoid robots create higher emotional bonds with the learners. These two central applications can be realized by specific robot apps. The Student Advisor app for Learning Analytics and a series of selected apps for the in-class phase. You can view these in detail on our project website. In order to make the in-class phase even more efficient, we have developed what we call the Classroom Application Packages or CAPS for short. These CAPS bundle several classroom activities via individual robot apps so that the robot takes over a respective task in the classroom for a certain period of time. And they can be modified during runtime through a direct interaction between the robot and the academic guide. Beneficiaries of these CAPS are the learners. They can profit from even more intensive learning support and advice. By the way, the CAPS are being developed in cooperation with the Chinese University of Hong Kong and their learning management system, UReply, since no financial support has been found in Germany so far. In summary, it can be stated that in classical teaching formats, there is no real use for robots except as showcases. Digital data cannot be accumulated in such scenarios, so learning analytics approaches are not realistic. In digital teaching and learning scenarios, however, there are two central use cases. Digital learner data for robot supported advice and assistance in the deepening phase in class through complex robot apps, the so-called classroom application packages. Thus, as long as higher education teaching and learning scenarios rely on traditional teaching formats, we don't need to talk about artificial intelligence and assistance robotics in education. Thank you very much for your attention.